criminology is often considered a subfield of criminology, the two fields do share much in common. Just as criminology is the study of criminals, as what they do, why they do it, and how the criminal justice system responds to them, victimology is the study of victims. It is the study of etiology of victimization, its consequences, how the criminal justice system accommodates and assists victims, and how other elements of society, such as the media, deal with crime victims. Victimization is the process of being victimized or becoming a victim. The term victim of crime especially refers to any person, group, or entity who has suffered injury or loss due to an illegal activity. The harm can be physical, psychological, or financial. Relative to the field of criminology, which originated around the mid-18th century, victimology is a young field with roots in the late 1940s. Since that time, several generations of scholars have advanced its theoretical beginnings and promoted the re-emergence of interest in the victim through a wide range of research questions and methods. Hans von Hempig, Benjamin Mendelssohn, and Henry Allen Berger examined the rapports between victims and offenders and emphasized that both were connected in a reciprocal relationship. However, the early scholarly work did not focus on the needs and rights of victims, but rather on the question of how victims contribute to their own victimization. Early criminologists explored, for instance, how reckless or careless behavior could attract the attention of robber or thieves and make it easier for them to carry out a criminal act. In his book, the criminal and his victim studies in the social biology of crime, Hans von Hempe attempted to identify the characteristics of a typical victim. Example, characteristics that could be viewed as effectively increasing the victimization risk of that person. While this approach may seem out of place today, as an example of victim blaming, Von Hentig nevertheless made a worthy contribution to criminology by emphasizing and demonstrating the importance of the victim in what Mendelssohn later called the penal couple of the victim and the offender. Early victimologists understand that one must have the interest in victims to properly and comprehensively study the offender. German criminologist Hans von Hempe first studied the characteristics that may contribute to predispose a person to become a criminal. Later, based on his previous research, he started to try to understand what predisposes some people to become victims of crime. Specifically, and as stated by Ferguson and Turvey, Von Hentig believed that some victims contributed to their own victimization by virtue of many converging factors not all of which were in their control. Crime occurs between two persons, a perpetrator and a victim, who interact together. As specified by Wilson, the criminal and the victim may come from two different worlds, but the perpetrator and the victim often bring equal weight to the mechanics of the crime. Similar to a criminal, a victim's behavior can be classified according to the factors, such as the psychological, sociological, and biological. In studying victimization, Von Hentig looked at the criminal victim diet, thus recognizing the importance of considering the victim and the criminal not in isolation but together. He attempted to identify the characteristics of a victim that may effectively serve to increase victimization risks. He considered that victims may provoke victimization acting as agents 
provocateurs based on their propensity of victimization. All these victims are targeted and contribute to their own victimization because of their characteristics. He insisted that many crime victims contribute to their own victimization, be it by inciting or provoking the criminal or by creating or fostering a situation likely to lead to the commission of a crime. Other pioneers in victimology who firmly believe that victims may consciously or unconsciously play a causal role outlined many of the forms this contribution can take. Say example, a negligence, carelessness, recklessness, impedance, and so forth. They pointed out that victim's role could be a motivational one or a functional one. Now let's look on Hans von Hentig's victims of typology. The first is the young. Young people are physically weaker, less mental prowess, fewer legal rights, and economically dependent on their caretakers. They lack the mental and emotional maturity to recognize victimization. Next are the women and the elderly. They lack physical strength. Women are physically weaker than men, culturally conditioned to accept men's authority, financially dependent, conditioned to believe that their value is associated with their bodies, therefore their sexuality. The elderly on the other side has many of the same vulnerabilities as the children or the young that was mentioned earlier. Usually the young, the old, and females may be victimized because of their ignorance or risk-taking or may be taken advantage of such as when women are sexually assaulted. Another category is the mentally defective and deranged. This covers the feeble-minded persons, the insane, drug addicts, and alcoholics. They usually have an altered perception of reality that leads them to be taken advantage of easily. The mentally defective or deranged may be victimized because they do not recognize appropriately respond to threats in the environment. Another are the immigrants, foreigners unfamiliar with the culture, gaps in communication and comprehension. They cannot understand language or threat of deportation makes them more vulnerable. Next, the minorities. They are the racially disadvantaged. These are groups against which there is some amount of bias and prejudice. Another category are the dull normals. These are the simple-minded persons who are easily deceived. They have the same type of exposure as the mentally defective and deranged persons. Usually, the immigrants, the minorities, and the dull normals are likely to be victimized due to their social status and inability to activate assistance in the community. Another category are the depressed. These are persons with various psychological maladies. They are gullible, easily swayed, and not vigilant. They can expose themselves to all manner of dangers. Another are the wanton. These are the promiscuous persons. They engage themselves in indiscriminate sexual activity with different persons. Another category are the acquisitive. These are people who are greedy and always looking for quick gains. They may suspend their judgment or put themselves in dangerous situations in order to achieve their goals. They can be targeted for scammers who would take advantage of their desire for financial gain. Another category are the lonesome and brokenhearted. The lonesome and brokenhearted are often prone to victimization by intimate partners. They desire to be with someone at any cost 
and are susceptible to manipulation. Those who are depressed, acquisitive, wanton, lonesome, or heartbroken may place themselves in situations in which they do not recognize danger because of their mental state, their sadness over a lost relationship, their desire for companionship, or their greed. Another category are the tormentors. They are the primary abusers in relationships and become victims when the one being abused turns on them. They expose themselves to the harm they inflict, the resulting angst, and the degree to which the victims fight back. Tormentors are people who provoke their own victimization via violence and aggression towards others. And the 13th category of Hans von Hentig's victim typology are the blocked, exempted, and fighting victims. They usually enter situations in which they are taken advantage of. They are those who are enmeshed in poor decisions and unable to defend themselves or seek assistance when victimized. An example of such victimization is a person who is blackmailed because of his behavior, which places him in a precarious situation if he reports the blackmail to the police. So those are the categories of victims typology by Hans von Hentig. Von Hentig's work was the basis of later theories of victim precipitation. Victim precipitation suggests that many victims play a role in their victimization. First, the victim acted first during the course of the offense, and second, that the victim instigated the commission of the offense. It is important to note that criminologists were attempting to demonstrate that victims may have some role in the victimizations and are not fully or truly innocent. Today, we often recognize the role of victimization without blaming the individual because ultimately, the person who offended is the person who offended. In theory, anybody can become a victim of a crime. Nevertheless, a particular person or members of certain groups are more vulnerable than others. For instance, as what was discussed earlier on the categories of victims of typology by Hans von Hemping, the minors, the elderly, women, tourists, the poor and urbanites are more vulnerable to become crime victim than others. Von Henty, who is the first victimologist to study the risk factors, believes that certain personal attributes have some effect in deciding the vulnerability of some individuals to crime. He maintains that those who are inexperienced and mentally weak, such as the immigrants, less educated, and illiterates, could be appealing targets for exploitation by offenders through deception and fraud. Those who are physically weak, such as the elderly, women, minors, are believed to be easy targets for physical attacks and robberies. For a long time, criminologists have given emphasis to the actions of the criminal whilst the role of the victim was virtually ignored. Nonetheless, over the years, it has been discovered that the role of the victim is actually significant as it can directly or indirectly influence fate and motivate a criminal. Though it is not evident whether certain behaviors can lead to the susceptibility to crime, this does not deny the fact that victimization is not a random process suddenly faced by the aggrieved party by mere chance. According to Von Henting, 
a victim's naivety is often a contributing cause to the criminal act and hence he should be collectively responsible for that. He holds that increased attention should be paid to the crime provocative function of the victim. Victimologists also believe that the relative probability of an individual's becoming victim of a crime can be anticipated. Thus, measures to prevent criminal victimization could be taken if potential victims are alert of potential criminals so that the victims can be more aware of them and keep away from unsafe situations. This cast is the definition of victimology and victimization, brief history, and the 13 categories of Hans von Hentig's victim typology. That's all for my report in victimology. Thank you.